Hello everyone. Welcome to another installment of Living a Pipe Life with Palm Tree Piper. Today we're going to talk about mortar, probably one of the lesser known and least understood pipe materials in use today. Is it stone? Is it wood? Let's unlock the mystery and discuss what makes it so special for producing strikingly beautiful pipes that smoke cool and dry, neutral tasting, and that you want to own. I'll show you a real live mortar pipe, no pun intended, and hoping that I've convinced you how awesome they really are, or at least pique your curiosity, suggest where you can buy a quality mortar pipe of your very own to enjoy. The term morta is derived from the word mortis, which is Latin for death. Now, your first impression might be that that doesn't sound like something you'd really want to smoke out of, but morta is partially petrified wood, sometimes called dead wood, and because it no longer contains living material, hence the name. Morta is used to make a variety of items like fountain pens, floor coverings, decorative doors, furniture, sculptured knife handles, and of course, tobacco pipes. The mortar commonly used for pipe making starts off as oak, and the bogs from which they are sourced are mostly found in Northern and Eastern Europe. Now it's here that they develop in poorly drained lake basins that over time fill with sediment and decaying plant material, causing chemical processes that slow or even prevent decay, even mummifying soft tissues. The bodies of animals and even people that have perished in bogs have been found in an amazing state of preservation, the most famous of which was Tolan Man, found in the peat bog in northern Denmark, who died around the time of the ancient Greeks. In fact, he was so well preserved that the details of his facial features, his leather cap, and even his whiskers are still intact. Uh, yeah, that kind of creeped me out too. Let's look at how Morta was created in nature. Petrification involves the very slow process of mineral saturating an organism turning it into a stony substance. The chemical makeup of peat bogs, which are anaerobic or lacking oxygen, acidic and mineral rich, is just the right environment for this process to take place. As the tannic acids found in the wood begin to react with the salts and other minerals in the water, the organic material in the cells of the original organism is replaced by a process called permineralization, so that its internal structures, particularly the wood grain, are preserved. The semi-petrified trees used for mortar are typically only between two and 5,000 years old. I say only because the process of fully petrifying wood takes hundreds of thousands to even millions of years and because the pores in the wood structure would be filled completely with mineral would be too dense and heavy to be used for tobacco pipe making. This is why our semi-petrified mortar pipes are still porous like briars but still retain their own unique smoking characteristics. So it's quite possible that if you own a mortar pipe, the original tree from which it developed might have fallen to a bog around the time the pyramids were being built, if not sooner, making it quite a conversation piece, and you haven't even lit it yet. But there's still a way to go before our piece of bog oak becomes a refined smoker. Good quality mortar is hard to find, and even harder to harvest from bogs. Imagine trying to handle a large stone tree trunk around a meter across that's filled with water and has been embedded in muck for at least a few millennia. Then it must be cut into more manageable pieces, transported great distance, and then cut again into even smaller pieces to allow it to dry. Drying is a delicate process. While briar can be kiln dried to speed things up a bit, mortar must be slowly air dried under the right conditions to keep it from splitting or cracking. It may take up to three or four years to properly dry, and the attrition rate is high. During the drying phase, many blocks are discarded because they may be warped or cracked or, once sufficiently dried, simply don't have the quality to be carved. Keep in mind that petrification is not a controlled process. It's subject to changing natural environmental conditions, which may differ in regions or even within the individual piece itself. At the end of the drying process, only a fraction of the original mortar found in the bog is deemed suitable for carving pipes. We now come to the climactic conclusion of our story thousands of years in the making. 
Pipe artisans now transform these mineralized blocks of wood into finished pieces that pipe smokers with discriminating taste would be happy to smoke and proud to display. The stakes are high because one small slip and the morta at this stage more brittle than briar, uh, corn cob, or even meerschaum can easily split or break off in chunks, rendering it useless and painstaking hours of work lost as a result of one false move. Because crafting a mortar pipe presents some challenges in carving, they are most commonly produced by artisan carvers as opposed to factory pipes, commanding a higher price. One of these challenges is the very size of the blocks themselves, many of which, after surviving the gauntlet of the drying process, are much smaller than their briar counterparts, short and square, producing a short shank or even a shankless bowl. You may note that many mortar pipes have a large shank trim, which provides not only a decorative touch, but more material to secure the tenon. Morta also presents challenges in carving as well. The density of the blocks may not be uniform and there's high incidence of flaws or anomalies in the grain, or all which may cause the bowl to crack and the whole effort for naught. As for those remaining intact, they usually come in pot or poker styles, though some superbly skilled artisans can make some rather exotic shapes, are sandblasted or polished bringing out the mortar pipe's distinctive straight grain and natural coloring, which can vary from brown to gray or black. So you can see that each mortar pipe is a survivor in its own right. It's interesting to note that though the material dates back to antiquity, as a pipe material, mortar is a relative newcomer to the world of pipes, with the first major brand to feature them was Peterson in 1906. Now it's time for the show and tell segment where I show you my own mortar pipe. I waited a long time to choose just the right pipe. I wanted something really distinctive that wouldn't break the bank. I came across Anton Pipe Art Studio, a Ukrainian pipe maker that works with briar, mortar, and other woods. But what really caught my attention was this uniquely styled mortar pipe. It's rare to see a stained mortar bowl, but as you can see, it really brings out the grain. You'll also note the briar shank trim, illustrating the use of this trim to lengthen the shank, as I mentioned before. The freehand style fitted vulcanite stem rounds out this beautiful piece that, typical of mortar pipes, smokes cool and dry, which I always say is the hallmark of a good tobacco pipe. So after learning all about mortar pipes, you're probably totally stoked to experience them firsthand. So where can you find one? First off, Let's look at the pitfalls of buying a mortar pipe and what to look out for. This first pipe does look like mortar in the picture, but lacks mortar or bock oak in the description, which itself is a bit off. Loudspeaker is a first for me. Beware of these wordy but disjointed write-ups for any pipe listing. The price is way too low, unless you're buying from someone who's not knowledgeable about pipes, which in the case of a family estate sale or some antique stores is quite possible, new, decent, basic mortar pipes generally start around $100, give or take. This one is similar. The uh, eagle decoration is a bit much. Now, this third one is actually oak wood. Not mortar, but actual oak wood, which, although not common, is available. There is no attempt to disguise it as a mortar, and Paranelli is a reputable brand from Italy. A few Morta pipe artisans that I would like to recommend are Chris Aswith in the UK, who I'd like to thank personally for his input in the background info and research for this video, adding that he sources his own Morta, which has been dated up to 10,000 years old, and that his choice of blocks are large enough for him to beautifully shape his own creations, as you'll see. I'd also like to recommend Dvorin Denovic of Croatia, Moretti Pipes of Italy, and Anton Pipe Studio, where I purchased my mortar pipe that I showed you. I've included the links below and leave you with this short montage of these pipe artisans and samples of their work. If you own a mortar pipe, please share your experiences and comment below. If you enjoyed the video, please like, and please subscribe as I will be concluding my series of pipe materials with a look of olive and pearwood pipes. Until then, stay smoky, stay safe, stay blessed.